Hello everyone and welcome to my guide to animation cancelling in the Elder Scrolls Online. So, as promised in my recent videos, I have said that I will take the feedback you put in the chat and apply it to my next video. Um, and I also asked people what they would like to see. And the common one that I saw from a lot of people alongside some other stuff which are on paper. Got that paper here if you're so interested. There it is. Um, was animation cancelling. So animation cancelling is something that is very important in Elder Scrolls, especially in the high-end PvP and PvE settings. It's going to be very important for increasing your damage in both continuous DPS and in burst. Um, and it's essentially going to sculpt your way through the entire game because every, pa pa every part, every aspect of the game that you do go through, you're going to need to know this. It's something that is going to be very important. Again, PvE, PvP... Um, and there's lots of different types. This is something people don't realize. There are different types and different things that people refer to as, in inverted commas, animation cancelling. So I'm going to go over each of one of those things. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to show you how I do it myself. Um, and maybe you've got your own thing that you like to do. Who knows? But I'm just going to give you that general overview of how to do it and when to use each type of cancel. So... Things that people can refer to cancel, remember, not necessarily all of them would be in my books. They cancel as such, they're more like a weave, but I'm going to go over them all for the sake of the video. So, first one, your dead basic light attack cancel. Everyone calls it a cancel, and I don't see any cancelling going on. It's a weave. It, it, it's just a weave. But, each to their own. Let me show you exactly how this works. So, what a light attack cancel is, and a lot of people are going to be thinking, oh, this is a fucking basic video, blobs. You're always making these standard easy mode things. Well, what a light attack cancel is, is quite literally that. You just light attack and cast an ability. It's obvious. But some people don't understand the concept, and some people waste a lot of DPS through this sort of stuff. So, this is very important in PvE. It's, it's essential. If you're not doing this in PvE, you're wasting huge DPS. In PvP, it's actually really important as well, except in a build that perma blocks. If you're perma blocking, it's very, very rarely used. So let me sort of go through the stuff that we're doing here. So what a light attack weave is. Light attack, ability. Now, why do we do that? That obviously looks boring and basic. If we spam an ability, we have that cooldown between. So you can see it there, a little pause, cast pause, cast pause, and there's a break. If we spam light attacks, there's a break between each light attack. What's the problem here? We're wasting time. I mean, if there's a break between both, why not capitalize on that? So, for example, light attack ability. We can do them both in the same game tick. So, essentially, that light attack is giving you a free DPS increase. It doesn't cost you anything at all. And so, you may as well use it. So, how would we do that? For me, that would be left-click light attack. Number two for crushing shock. And we just do that back to back to back. So left click, cast, left click, cast, left click, cast, etc. So that's increasing our DPS by the price of the light attack, which is going to be anywhere between about 2 and 6k per week. That's a huge damage increase. That's anywhere between like 2 and 6k DPS increase to get those. And if you're running a high crit build, high damage build, you might even be talking more here. So it's a hugely notable amount and something you just don't want to waste. I mean, it makes no sense to waste that. So... Make sure you're doing that, both PvE and PvP. It's going to be very important for you. So, next one, very similar, also nice and simple, is a heavy attack weave. Exactly the same sort of thing. This is something you'd use when you're on lower resources, but you still want to keep a weave going. So, for example, between our abilities, we may do a heavy fire because we're low resources. Or we may do a channeled heavy, such as a rester or a lightning, where they do that, you wait for the final cast to go and then cast, but we'll do that quicker. So that way we get it off at the end of it. So as the cancel finishes, our ability goes off. And you'll see that nicely with blockade. So if I do it, pause and cast, you see that sort of gap between the uh, cast channel. So at the end of this lightning staff, you'll see my staff sort of lift up. We can get that to automatically cast off our ability like so. So channel ability and it goes off during that cast and just speeds up your general dps and rotation importantly so yeah a nice one to learn that these two are nothing complicated these two people always say are your animation cancels far as i'm concerned it's really just a weave there's nothing too complicated going on there and you can do these with any skill you like so for example let's go light tech ability light tech ability light tech ability light tech empower light tech buff whatever it is it don't matter it's still just going to increase your dps you should weave it between everything 
It makes no sense not to. Uh, so, your next one is going to be a very PvE related. Uh, very, very important for PvE. But also going to help you in PvP often if you do get it down. And that is a cancel through a weapon swap. So this is what I would call a proper cancel. There's three different types of cancels in my opinion. But people always call these weeps cancel. Up to you, I guess. Um, so this first one is going to be a weapon swap. Now what a weapon swap cancel is, is it's basically saving myself time when I'm crossing my bars. So obviously in PvE, PvP settings, it doesn't matter. You've got two bars of abilities. Do I want to be stuck on one bar? No. Why don't I want to be stuck on one bar? It don't make fucking sense. I'm wasting time. So let's give you an example here. If I was to go light stack crushing shock, light stack crushing shock, wait, weapon swap, light stack crushing shock, I waste time. So let me do that again. There's a gap there between those abilities. It doesn't flow smoothly and I'm wasting DPS time. What I can do to compensate for that, of course, is to cancel the ability on the second cast with a weapon swap. So essentially, what I do is cast my ability and swap at the same time and that way I'm ready on the next bar to cast. So if I show you this in a sort of smooth setting, we would go light tech ability, light tech ability swap, light tech ability and we can do that nice and quickly so one two one two swap one two and that way we're getting that smoothness in our rotation to increase our overall damage potential and overall dps we're not wasting that time crossing bars and so our overall damage output is much much higher now the reason this is so important in pve is not only are you saving time and that's dps but it's also going to get you onto bars and this is again important for pvp too where you might need to cast a buff or shield, especially in PvP, quicker. So, let's imagine that my Crushing Shock's in this bar. Uh, my other bar, I would normally have harness where the Crushing Shock is on this one. This one is damage. I might need to go Light Tech Ability Swap because I'm taking offense, and then I might go Light Tech Shield. So I put my damage shield up, and that way I'm ready to take the hit if I think I'm in trouble. It's gonna open up that time for reaction a little bit, and it leaves a little more room uh, for mistakes and it gives it just gives you a little more time to react so very very important one how would we do this again if i just go for the buttons light attack left click two for ability f for swap just done quickly that's left click to swap there you go so that's a weapon swap cancel nice and easy so next two are going to be very pvp related the first one is a block cancel and this is used generally in your longer animation stuff in a burst People will sometimes use this in PvE. I can't really say that I've ever seen a merit on it. It doesn't really change anything at all. But in PvP, it will increase the first tick of an ability's arrival time. What I mean by that is, if I go light tech ability, you see two damage numbers, right? If I do that quickly, you see two different numbers appearing, or in this case, obviously four, because we do have the uh, crushing shock. I could sort that to final healthy, make that simpler. One sec. There you go, it's going to be easy for you. If, of course, it swaps. There we go. Nice. So what you'll see is a number there and a number there. Two different numbers appear. If I do that quickly, two different numbers appear. I can make that impact of my funnel health, the second cast. We've got light tech, then ability. We can make that ability arrive in the same game tick as that light tech with a block cancel. So what a block cancel does is it completely cuts off the animation of a cast skill. So I would go light tech ability block. And that way, my skill arrives slightly faster the sort of skills that you'll see is big time a lot for example are things like blockade long animation so you'll see that blockade go down and you see my staff does that huge animation if i just block it you don't see any animation so it goes off nice and smoothly and it's going to increase your burst this is something you don't need to spam there is no point unless you're trying to camouflage something and this is something you sometimes do in pvp that i'll get onto in a sec in spamming this there's no point it's something you'll generally use towards the end of a kill where, for example, with a Dawnbreaker, my Dawnbreak animation might go like so as I'm dropping the burst. Let me get that ulti back up a sec. But instead, what I can do is block Cancel off and land the burst even faster, thus getting my kill that split second quicker and giving them that millisecond left to react if by chance they're synced to be able to shield just as the next bit's coming in, for example, and execute whatever. It can be the difference between getting that kill and not. So once I've got this ultimate, I'll show you exactly the same animation with the cancel. And you'll notice that difference that the burst comes in faster. There's no long animation. It just looks smoother. It's harder to react to, etc. So again, the block, that's how that would look. And it's just harder to react to. Nice and simple one there. 
Uh, what I mean by camouflage then, so I did say you could also use this to camouflage, is that if, for example, I had a, uh, I don't know, let's think of a really good example, a crystal fragment as a sork in my hand ready, what I might want to do is when I'm considering going for that, I might cancel each of my cards off just to make it less predictable what I'm doing. And that way, when I've got the crystal frag ready, they never expect it coming because it's hard to see the animations. Things are arriving quickly. So that might be one time I use that. But generally speaking, this is something I apply much more to the burst. And again, far, far more so in PvP. So your final cancel then is going to be a bash cancel. So what a bash cancel is, is the same. Hence, I didn't explain the controls. But also, when you block, you're going to bash as well. That's going to increase the impact speed even more slightly. Only very, very slightly. But it's also going to add a bit of burst from that bash. So if I was to show you, for example, a staff bash, we get that extra 600, maybe a 900 crit or whatever damage into our weave. Um, and that's something sometimes that can be really, really useful. So let's take a few examples. PvE, very rare for a magical player to do this, if ever. You're probably low stamina. It's going to cost you a lot to bash. Probably not going to happen. I can imagine, and I have no experience in stamina PvE, but I can't imagine you wanted to waste this. If you are doing a stamina DPS and the boss is really, really close to dead, there's not really any reason if you're sitting there with 80% stamina to not weave that bash in. If he's going to die in the next 10 seconds anyway, I see no reason not to add a bash into there because you've got the stamina spare and it's extra bonus DPS. So perhaps you'd use it there. Not something I'm sure on, but I'm pretty sure you would be able to do that. Where you will see it a lot is PvP. In PvP, if I have a lot of stamina a cheap cost or a lot of stamina left, those are the times when I will generally add into my cancel a bash to increase my burst. So let's imagine my opponent's sitting on 60% health, I was to Dawnbreaker him, and he sits on maybe 2k health after the dot ticks. Have I just wasted my time? Yeah, he's going to heal. But what if I was to put a bash in there as well? Suddenly, if I was to proc something executey, I've killed my opponent. So it's giving you that increased chance to actually get a kill. Let's take an example here then. So I was to light tech ability. You get that. Gets 2.5k, 7.1k. If I was to light tech ability bash, we get that 600 extra. And that's just increasing your DPS that little, little bit on the burst. So it does help a lot. Times you're going to use this a lot then outside of execute. So obviously, again, close to executing, really close to killing my opponent, I might add it in once in any build. If I'm in a normal build, though, that's going to be expensive on stamina. So if I was to spam bash a sec, if I do that four or five times, I'm already dead. I mean, I've got no stamina left. But if I've got a one-hand shield, I already get 20% less block cost, 20% uh, less bash cost from the passive in the one-hand shield skill located here. So 20% less bash cost, always good news. I can get that increased DPS regularly. So during my weave, anytime offense, I'll weave a bash. And then defense, I'll just be careful to regain stamina. So it's going to give you that chance to really pressure a little bit more. And it's quite important in that. The other time I would use this outside of execute is stamina classes. Anytime, and this is just for me personally, that I am putting offense on as a stamina class, I will bash weave. Because it really, really adds to that burst potential. Imagine you're hitting something like Surprise Attack 4k and then your bash hits 1.5k. Well, you've just done maybe, I don't know, two-fifths of your damage again. So there's no point in losing that burst potential on your opponent when you're going for a kill. If you're on the offense, weave the bash in and you're going to get that damage a little bit more. And you're going to get a few more kills in the game. So finally, if I was to go through the methods of that, you'd go left click for cast. Ability number two, right click, block. Right click, left click, bash. That would be my setup. Again, if it's different for you, do it in your own time. So we do that quickly with the block and then with the bash. Simple, really. It's kind of hard to not do it twice if you're not doing it as smoothly as a full rotation, but you get the general idea. I think I've covered all the cancels that I personally can think of off the top of my head. There might be some other weird ones out there that I just can't think of. But I hope this is useful for some people. It has been asked for a lot. I do hope some people have seen the benefit of this. There may be some people watching my videos who are very good players. I know there are, especially for my 1VX edits and that sort of stuff. Apologies. Some of my videos have to look after other players as well. Um, and I did get a lot of requests for this. So if you have any requests for any other videos, guys, bang it in the chat. I will do them. 
I'm trying to be act very active on my YouTube. I've seen a lot of growth. A lot of people being appreciative of the videos. We do get the regular dislikers, but who gives a shit about them? I do appreciate the love, guys. So any videos you'd like to see, bang it in the chat. Show that support with a like, with a sub, if you have not done already. Um, keep me motivated. I am very motivated at the moment. Nothing better than more motivation. And I hope that I can keep providing this content that you guys are liking, because it's clear to me that you guys are liking this content. So thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, so bang it in the chat. Anything you want help with, I will get through that. I do go through as much of the comments as possible whenever I can. And I will definitely look forward to making some more videos for you. Hopefully in the next few days, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after. Who knows? But thank you guys. I will see you again. And good luck with the cancels.